Well, I'm sure you remember the story. Our King Nebuchadnezzar was having mysterious dreams that no one could interpret for him. He called together all his wise men and magicians, but no one could tell the king his dream and what it meant. Then finally, the Hebrew slave Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The king was so impressed that he made Daniel master of the Magi. That's quite an honor, for the Magi were the king's advisors and the wisest men in all of Persia, and Daniel was put in charge of them. Think of it, Daniel, a Hebrew, the master of the Magi. Daniel was a very wise man indeed. The Magi was in spellbound as Daniel told them of the things his God did and of the promises he made to his people. One particular promise held a special fascination for the wise men. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. A star and a scepter. That meant that there would be a sign in the heavens that would announce the birth of a king. Now that was news, but when would it appear? As it turned out, we had to wait 600 years, but we always remembered the words of Daniel and his God. And then, one night, the strangest thing happened. We saw something in the heavens that we had never seen before. We knew that this star was an announcement from the God of Daniel the arrival of this long-awaited king. We couldn't believe our eyes. Daniel was right. <coughs> Do you see what I see? Yes, it's beautiful. The most magnificent sight I've ever seen. A sign like this must be the announcement of a most remarkable event. A most remarkable event indeed. The star in the heavens, brighter than any star has ever been. Could this be the star that Daniel told us would announce the birth of this king? Yes, Daniel's king. It must be. Only the birth of a king could demand this such an announcement as And only the birth of a great king could create such an event in the heavens. Come then, we must go to the land of Daniel, to Jerusalem, his capital. Surely they'll know what their king is. We must honor such a magnificent king whose birth commands such attention in the heavens.
We traveled for days until we reached the outskirts of Jerusalem. And there we began to inquire in the villages about the king that was born. Oddly, no one seemed to be aware of a newborn king. So we traveled to Jerusalem, riding through the city streets in all our grandeur. From his palace, Herod saw us coming. He recognized us as Persians by our steeds and our priestly conical hats, and he was greatly distressed. You see, the Romans and the Persians have mistrusted each other for hundreds of years. Herod greeted us cautiously and seemed interested in our quest. He called together the chief priests and teachers of the Jews and, to his surprise, learned that the long-awaited king, their Messiah, was to be born in Bethlehem, only a few miles away. So Herod sent us on our way with a request that after we found the king, we should return to Jerusalem and tell him where this new king was, so that Herod himself could worship him also. So off we went, and as we began to travel away from Jerusalem, we again saw the same star that we had seen in the east, and we were overjoyed to know that we were on the right track. Out in the field, we stopped to view the star, which was now brighter than ever. Nearby were shepherds, who were amazed not only to see the brightness of the sky, but in its light, these Persian magi, gazing up at the heavens. When we inquired of the shepherds concerning the newborn king, one of the shepherds told us about the miraculous event that lit up the night sky many months earlier and announced the birth of the Savior King. What shepherd? Where are the poor kings who have recently been born? Behold, this is his star. We saw it many months ago, and now I see the people of us in this direction. What do you know about this king? Sir, I am but a lowly shepherd, but I know this king whom you see. I have seen him with my own eye. Tell us more, tell us more. My brothers and I were guarding our flock at night when suddenly a glorious angel appeared. It frightened us terribly. But he said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And you shall find the baby wrapped in swapping clothes, lying in a man. Then suddenly the whole sky was filled with a multitude of angelic beings that began praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men.
left us, and the sky, which had been as bright as day, again became dark. We left one brother there to guard the sheep, while the rest of us ran fetch at him and found the child lying in the manger, just as the angel had said. Brothers, do you realize all this man just told us? Could the bright light we saw in the heavens that night have been the glow from the multitude of angels who announced his birth? Have we witnessed the very glory of God in the light of his angels? And the angel said, the new world king was both Savior and Lord. This is no ordinary king. God himself has ordained his birth, given him a purpose, and a calling far above that of his ordinary king. This child is most certainly a heavenly king. From all the shepherd told us, we began to realize that this king was more than special. Angelic beings had announced his birth, and not just one angel, but multitudes whose radiance had so filled the night sky that it had been visible to us hundreds of miles away. The angel had also called him Savior and Lord. He had said that this king's birth was good news to all men. For the first time, we began to realize that this was perhaps not just Daniel's Messiah and King, but our King and our Savior as well.
Asia, we thank God for each of you. We're not going to ask a specific offering, but we will have our greeters at the back. If you desire to give a love gift, we will appreciate it. This time we will have our period of time.